Hi there guys, I'm Chris Bowden and welcome to The Geek Group. Today we have a special edition of Equipment Autopsy because we have this drinking fountain in our hallway that we're going to take apart and we're just going to scrap it out because we can't use it and I'll get into why. But this is coming out and I figured it'd be more fun to do this here in the hallway with, you know, in situ than just take it off and put it on a bench because I'm probably going to destroy this just taking it off the wall anyway. The other thing that's kind of special about this video is you'll notice since we're not in the studio, we're doing this on the Steadicam. So we have our awesomely talented cameraman, Tom, who is on his like first week of running a Steadicam. So if the video is kind of weird, that's because Tom's still getting his feet under him. But he's going to get a lot better at this, and this gives him practical experience with it. So comment on how you think Tom's awesome brand new Steadicam abilities are. It's going to be pretty cool. So with that, let's get into the drinking fountain. Now this is pretty much your generic run-of-the-mill drinking fountain. It's kind of old. We don't know how old it came with the building, but we can't use it anymore. It works, but there's two reasons why we can't use it. One, the plumbing to it was rotten out, just completely destroyed, so that all got cut out and just capped off by the plumbers. So we couldn't hook it up if we wanted to, because really we're not going to pay like 500 bucks just to make a drinking fountain work. The other side is this sat for years through hot and cold cycles without like being used at all. So I can't trust that the inside isn't teeming with Legionella or Syphagana herpes or whatever. I'm not gonna risk having people getting sick off of my drinking fountain. That's just, that's bad and easy to fix. We're just gonna rip it out, throw it away. We might get some cool parts out of it, but it's a fun thing to take apart because it's something that everybody gets to see and nobody ever gets to really play with. So let's look into a drinking fountain. So this is what we got. It's got power, and here's the plug that goes up to the drinking fountain itself because it has this, and this, see this weird black box sealed tight that has a lot of little coppery bits going in and out, and it's got a big expansion thing, and that, this is a very, you'll see these a lot of places, and this is a refrigeration pump. If you dig inside like a mini fridge, if, you know, stuff like that, you'll see these all over the place. Air conditioners, mini fridges, phase change computer systems, um, just all kinds of stuff. But this is a standard compressor setup. Um, the little sticker on it here, it says R134A, dead giveaway. That's, that's the type of refrigerant that this is set up to use. Now, the way this works is electricity goes in. There will be a thermal switch and all that. goes into the little compressor in here. This is all sealed. And this runs a compression coil up to here which is our reservoir, which is what makes cold water. So this is the machine that makes the cold. This is where the cold is actually created. And then there's the exhaust fins on this side. So you'll see a little radiator in there. We'll take that out. And that's, that's all the refrigeration stuff. Then on top of that, you have the regular water movement stuff. So you've got the valve here coming out of the wall. And this is a standard like for a sink valve with a little 3 inch pipe. And then we've got this here, which I have no idea what this is, but I'm guessing it's a check valve. And that goes up to the water, which will go up to a valve that's actuated by this. And then it goes through a thing. And this is our air brake, because the water comes out here. And with almost all plumbing codes anywhere, it is a requirement that from where the water comes out of the faucet to where the water goes down the drain has to be an air gap of X amount. Um, and there can't be any way. Like if you put a hose on here, permanently attached a hose from here to like fill buckets and stuff, and that just set up here when not in use, that would actually be against the law because it would allow when the valve turned off or if the valve malfunctioned and the water turned off or something like that, that this could backfeed dirty water out of the drain and that contaminates the water supply and that's bad. So there's your air gap and all that. And that goes down the drain. That comes down here. This is a drain pipe, which is brass. Goes through this, which is just nickel plated brass. And then down here, this is the P-trap here. And this holds a small amount of water, almost exactly that much. The amount of water it holds will always be, if you look back here, right there where that pipe comes out of the wall, the bottom of that pipe, this level, right about here, which comes out here to about this level right here, that'll be full of water, which is kind of a serious trap, really. Um, but it holds a slug of water in there just by gravity. As you add more water here, it pushes out on the other side. But what it does is, by putting a slug of water in there, it prevents sewer gases from coming back and venting out. 
over time, like this, you'll find this if you have like a, a cottage or a summer house or something like that. Um, over time, the water in here will evaporate if you just let it sit for a long time. And if you walk into like your cottage and the bathroom really stinks bad, flush the toilet. The minute you put water in the trap, it seals off the sewer gases and it works again. That's, that's a P trap. There's also an S trap. The only difference is a P trap goes straight out the back. So it's shaped like a P and an S trap goes down and then exits out the bottom. So it just goes in a big S. So if it goes out the back, it's a P trap. If it goes straight down, it's an S trap. So let's dig into this and take some stuff apart. We've got, we've got a power feed here, but I'm not gonna worry about that. It should be dead anyway. Um, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. What do we want to start with? Let's start, let's, let's get some of this stuff just out of the way. So we're gonna need a relatively small socket. I'm gonna say 5 16 maybe. Oh, I'm so good. Such mad skills. Okay, we're just gonna take a couple things out of the way. Safety first, let's get rid of that electrical ground. Green means ground, and that's a smaller one, so we'll just take this off. I'm hoping to get as much of the, the outer covers off as possible before really digging into it, so I can show you guys everything and how it works, because it's kind of cool. And this is just held together with little zip screws. Well, no, these aren't zip screws. These are sheet metal screws. A zip screw has a little drill bit on the end. They're referred to as self-tapping sheet metal screws. This is just a sheet metal screw. So toss those in our bucket. And this, oh, this holds that whole thing. OK, that's not just like a little reinforcement thing. That's, that's a whole deal. All right. It's weird because there's no obvious order of assembly on this, so I don't know what I should start with taking apart. Come on out of there. Okay. Um. Oh, okay. Oh. Hey, Batman! I could really use a Phillips head screwdriver. He gave me all the plumbing stuff. A straight blade screwdriver. Ah. ah. All right. That's why we have a Gerber. See, usually on the autopsy set, I have all the tools that I would need, everything all set up. This one's a little weird. I needed a Phillips head screwdriver, sir. There was one. Uh, there is? Yeah, I in the back. That probably wasn't a good thing to do. Where is it in the bag? See if you can find it. The wooden handle screwdriver was a straight blade. Oh, there's another one. Okay, I didn't see that way over there. Oh, it's rusted. It's really, really rusted. Oh, that was pleasant. All right, so that's, that's our lower cover. That's, that's quality. Uh, Batman, I'm going to, no, I might be able to do it with a straight blade. We've got some funny screws here. They're Torx with a straight blade. These? Yeah. I'll give you one of those. You want the torque? Uh, yeah, go see if you can dig one up. I'll keep rocking these out and see how far I can get. All right, I'm going to take off these uh, 
Phillips heads under here. There's a lot of screws under this, so I'll just take a minute to get these out. Oh, oh, and that's. You would think if you were making something, it's going to be a drinking fountain. You might use some stainless steel in it. Ah. Maybe plan that, hey, this might get wet. This might rust a little bit. You might want to think about that. If this is going to be a machine that somebody's probably going to install. It's going to sit there for 50 years. It might have the opportunity, perhaps, to collect a little rust. I just want to plan ahead for that. I don't know what that does, but it has something to do with the valve because it moves. Huh. All right, we'll figure it out. We'll get in there. Thank you, sir. Oh, that's much easier. He had enough forethought to use torque so that even when it's rusted out of it, you can still get a good bit on it. Way easier than doing a straight plate. Is there anything on top? You. All right. So there's our button. Our button's actually really big. And look. Okay. Now the button gets pushed, right? And every time the button gets pushed, this screw, because it goes in, wants to tighten the screw into the thing. But on this side, the screw wants to loosen out. So here is a design flaw. This screw comes out all on its own over years of use. You see that? Right there. Ah. <laughs> First time steady cam. Okay, ah, there's the screws. They're way in the back. I'm gonna get this back here. Get this one over here. Okay. Now we can take this trim piece off. Yeah, we don't need that. Okay, now we're down into where we can actually start seeing more stuff. And we'll take that out with a straight blade. Ooh, that's not gonna happen. All right, how many a socket that fits that? Maybe it's this one. No, it's too big. All right, what do we need? Probably a quarter inch. Yep. Okay, get rid of that. If they'd have gone to boltdepot.com and gotten proper stainless hardware, this would have been a million times easier. Now that is going to be held on there. Probably the drain pipe and the supply pipe. Yep. Oh, I don't know how the hell I'm supposed to get way in there. All right, I'm just going to reach right through. See if I can get this. You can, oh, it works if I use the right screwdriver. You can see this little clamp right here. I'm gonna try and get that off. You wanna tell people over there it's a live shoot? Okay. 
All right, so we're going to fight our way in there and loosen that clamp. Going to be able to effectively loosen that clamp, so we're just going to take it out down here on the drain side. We can just grab this with this ridiculously oversized set of channel locks. Okay, and I know here we should be above the water because the water level is right there. We marked it. So I should be able to pull this out and it should be dry. Now we've got that. Now we've got to get this out here. But I can pull that out after I get the drain thing out. So we'll grab that and it should lift out. Are we separating at the drain? Okay. At this point, pick your Gerber up off the floor because it's going to get wet. And get the bucket right out here because this is going to get icky and wet. And disconnect this. Yeah, be careful not to crimp down too tight when you're grabbing the plastic thing because it's, it's a thin metal ring and you'll just crimp it onto the cheap plastic pipe. So we got that. Let's take the whole thing right out. We're probably going to lose a little water this time. All right, that's totally out. OK, that's moving. There's no other connections up here except this water line, which is just soft copper, so we can cut that. You can actually just grab it and bend it and break it. If we grab it with something more substantial than those, do we have a pair of dikes in there? Here, we'll just we'll just grab our ridiculously large channel locks. Okay, that's disconnected in the most ridiculous manner possible. Now we twist this. There, that's out. And there's our top. So we can see our gasket, some serious funky gunge down in there. But that's, that's the top. We don't need that anymore. Whew, that was fun. Was it good for you, Tom? All right, now, while I'm on it, while I'm dealing with Icky, I'm just going to get this whole drain out and just get that right out of the picture. So there's our compression. that out. It goes way far into the wall. Come on. I want to do this and not drop nasty all over me in the process. But it's kind of caught on a little lip, so... Oh, you suck. <laughs> it's hitting that. OK, all right, just push that out of the way. Come on. You want to do it slow, because if you force it, it can snap. And you don't want to dump that on you, because that's, that's pretty gross. So we'll just put that down in our bucket. All right, but now the cool side is, from this point on, 
it's a pretty clean process because all our drain is up in the wall. And I don't have to, like, usually if you're working on a sink or something, you want to take a, uh, like a plastic grocery bag works really well. And you just stuff it in a hole and leave a big wad hanging out, and that'll keep sewer gases from coming back at you. Since that sewer pipe only goes into the wall a little bit and just doesn't exist beyond there, I don't have to worry about sewer gases or anything like that, so we're totally cool. Um, let's grab a little wrench, and we'll disconnect our water supply fitting here. It's just a little compression flare thing kind of thing. So we don't have to really, there we go, that's that. I don't know what this is. I think it's a check valve, but I don't really know. Okay, so we come from the water supply. It goes through this, which I think is a check valve. Then it goes up here, and here's our valve. Okay, that just gets pushed. And that's our water valve for the thing. So we can disconnect this by pushing in on those. That's a compression fitting there. So here's our check valve, I think. Looks like a check valve. Here, we'll take. Does it have an arrow on it? Does not have an arrow on it. Usually check valves have an arrow. Yeah, this just says, it might be a filter. It might be an input filter. It, and there's an easy way to find out. Let's find out if it's a filter or a check valve. We'll open it up. But it says YS-FNSF-61. But I think, I think it's a filter. I think it's a filter, and I want to know. So let's see if we can just grab it. Where's my ridiculously large chin? Yeah, OK. Do we have like normal people size tool? OK, here, this is what we want. Here, we'll grab this with that. Let's take the big pipe off of it first. There. Okay, we don't, we don't need that. I'm not squeezing the pipe with these. I'm using these to push down on the, the gray ferrule. And if I, do, if I push on that and pull on this and grow an extra hand, I'll be able to pull that out like that. Now, we'll take the big pliers, adjust them one notch bigger, and we'll hold the lower thing there like that. And we'll take the little pliers, and we'll grab this and just open this right up and see what we see. And if we see a filter element, because if this is a filter, it would stand to reason that they would have a replaceable filter element in there. So let's open this up. Hey, it's a filter. We can tell because Durban Ninja time. What is that? There's a little screen. And you can see all kinds of grody stuff. So we know this is actually a little inline filter. And the water comes in and then travels through the filter and then goes back out around the filter. So this is, yeah, it's a filter. Well, a little, it's a simple filter. It's just, just a screen, but it caught a lot of crap, kept it out of the line. So that's cool. It did its job admirably. And long shall we remember you, little filter. Okay, so then we go, we go through the filter, and our next step is to go through the main valve here, which is the, this big thing here. Push this valve, and you just push that in, and that's a valve. And you can see there's an in clearly labeled here. They didn't label out. They just left that up as an exercise to the reader. And then this is our final output. This is from the valve into here. This is the heat exchanger for cold. And this will be neat to take apart, but I want to try and do it without releasing all of the refrigerant, so that's going to take a little doing. All right. All right, I'm going to do some general just getting panels out of the way real quick because we're down to where we can take a lot of stuff off.
thing makes guinea pig noises while you work on it. I once dated a girl with a guinea pig named Mort, because that's the sound they make. Mort, Mort, Mort. Oh, wow. Get that now. Ah, there we go. Okay, now we can really get a look in there. All right, now here's what we've got for the cooling side. This is our radiator, heat exchanger. Now, let's talk a little bit about how phase change systems work. If you've ever used uh, a can of spray paint or hairspray or anything in a spray can, uh, spray air is a really good example. As you spray it, you'll notice the can gets cold. Well, that's because when you convert a liquid, which is what's inside the, the can, a compressed gas that's compressed so much it's a liquid, when you convert a liquid to a gas, you get rid of a lot of heat, which is why if you have water boiling on the stove, it's actually getting rid of a lot of heat. When you compress a gas, you create a lot of heat because you're, you're, it's, it's just the process of going one to the other. So temperature pressure and state, which is a result of pressure, is, is all intertwined, okay? So what's happening here is we have a compressor down here that's taking the refrigerant, which is basically it's a liquid like Freon or something that'll really happily, handily change from liquid to a gas and back and forth at a temperature and pressure that's convenient for you know, this kind of application. But this compressor is compressing the gas form of our 134A into the liquid form. And when it does that, it makes a lot of heat. Okay, so we're putting energy into it, and it's, it's, we're putting mechanical energy into it, and we're getting heat out. Well, that heat first goes into here. And this 
is just a radiator where that heat is pushed out by this fan. So we're, we're radiating away that heat through conduction and radiation and getting it out. So warm air comes out here and that's the heat energy coming out from the mechanical energy we put in here. It's that energy and we're getting rid of that. And as, we, as that happens, we now just have liquid in the pipe, okay? And the liquid in the pipe, which is now just not so hot, goes through an expansion point, which is probably here or something like that or controlled by this. I don't really know the details on this system. And it goes into here and that liquid goes through a very tiny orifice and it's allowed to expand. So we've got the high pressure liquid going through a little tiny hole. And on the other side of that hole, it's a vacuum or it's a much lower pressure and it allows it to expand out into a gas. And as it's expanding into that gas, you've got the hairspray in the can. So it gets cold. The side of the can gets cold. And that cold happens in here. So now, but see, cold doesn't exist. There's no such thing as cold. Just like there's no such thing as dark. Cold is an absence of heat energy. So that cold over here is only cold because it's actually absorbing energy. It's sucking in the heat energy and inside here, and because it's all insulated, we'll tear into it in a second, but inside here will be coils in that for the water line in, so it sucks the heat energy out of the water and it makes the water cold. Because now it's just water at a low, lower thermal energy state. And then you can, cold water is better to drink than hot water. So let's, let's dig off some insulation, okay? Let's, let's get into this. See, we've got all kinds of pipe. Now we've got different pipes. Some of these pipes, like these pipes, are for refrigerant. These copper pipes are for refrigerant. These copper pipes are for water. Now they look exactly the same, but you don't want to mix them up. So, because if we cut with the refrigerant pipes right now, we're still under pressure and, and will be for another 50 years if we just leave them alone. So let's, let's be careful. Oh, hey, look, there's a little plastic strap right there. So we'll just cut this strap. Okay, and there's one down here too. We'll cut that one. Get out of the way. And now we should be able to just pop these apart. We'll hope they didn't like glue them on or anything stupid like that. Because it'll be really cool if we can just pop this open and look at that. Oh wow. Okay, here. You don't you don't need that anymore. Is it wrong that I kind of just want to put this on my car because it looks cool? No practical application, it just, just looks cool. Ah! Okay, we'll get rid of all this insulation. Now this, now, all the green is not mold. The green is copper oxide. The, it's why the Statue of Liberty is green, because Statue of Liberty is actually made out of copper. So that's, that's copper oxide. And this is just putty, like plumber's putty, kind of icky. But look at that. So we've got a reservoir. Now the water goes inside here, okay? And we've got this, which coils all the way around. So we've got water in there and there. And then this is our refrigerant line, which coils around and around and around and around. around. So, and they both come out the bottom. So the water and the refrigerant are like right next to each other, all the way down this thing. Plus, we've got a tank full of water, which means out the bottom, we didn't even notice this before. I didn't see it, did you? Out the bottom, we've got this little dingus. So in theory, if I pull that, I should get really icky old water comes out and lots of it. Batman, could you, sir, empty the bucket? I'm probably going to need it again. Or just grab me a different bucket. Now while Batman does that, let's take this off because we've got another valve down here or we can take the radiator off. But I can't really do that without opening the system. I, I, my goal here is to do this without taking apart the phase change system. I don't, I don't want to break that because it needs to be vented safely and this stuff is, it, you have to recover it. I mean there's, there's rules involved here and I don't want to just cut it open and vent it out because I don't know enough to do that safely. It's okay not to know something, 
that's all right because we have the internet. I mean, look it up on Wikipedia. But it's really important to know what you don't know. And it's important to not jump into things where, OK, I don't know this, but this could be dangerous. And you know this, because I, I don't know if it's poisonous. I don't know if it's you know, you know suffocate people or stuff. So just before you mess with it, you hop on Wikipedia and you look up R134A, and then you know everything there is to know about it that you need to know to work on this safely. And it's, you can do this. It's not hard. It's okay not to know. And don't don't ever be afraid to admit you don't know something, because it's way better to tell somebody I don't know than it is to say, Oh yeah, I know all about that stuff. I can. I can drive that aircraft carrier, we'll be fine. Batman, if I had a pair of dykes, my whole world would be a better place. Yeah? Yeah. All right. One set of dykes coming up. Thank you, sir. Oh, there's so much dust in this, just old dust, and it's, ah, it's tasty. That's what it is, it's tasty. Loving my job right now. All right, does that fit that? No, we're back down to the quarter inch. Future engineers and manufacturers, you will notice that this whole machine has been made with only two different size screws, okay? Five sixteenths and quarter inch. Now, if you're doing that, why do you need two different sizes of screws? Because really, for this application, they're pretty much interchangeable. You could have gone safe and just used a bigger size for the whole thing. Then you'd only had to buy half the tools, half the supply chain, save half the time. Thank you, sir. I'm going to have to get over here a moment, Tom. This little tiny radiator is pretty cool looking. What's really neat is if I can keep this all intact, we can actually use this little refrigeration system for something and make a demo out of it. You could use it for cooling a really awesome computer or something like that. Because, I mean, you've got all the parts here, and they're pretty compact. It's, it's a small scale setup. Ah. All right, we've got our wires all cut. That's our main power. We're going to dike that right out. We don't need that at all. OK, so we'll just get rid of that. We're going to keep this, because that's our power door compressor. Or is that? I've got wires on both sides, so I'll figure that out. And this just goes over here to that. And we don't need that. That's just a dumb little switch. And we'll reach back in here, cut that. It's geek yoga there for me. All right, so that's all out. Now we're going to dump some water right here. Because the only way I can get that out, well, I'm going to see if I can, there might be a way to get this out without having to drain it, but I don't think that's going to happen. But I'd like to get it out of the machine before I have to drain it. So we'll see what happens there. Now, this, that is securely attached. Where's the other? Oh, that was dumb. OK. Um, we got to get those two screws in the back. Tom, don't steal my screwdriver. Why do you got to be like that, Tom? That's the wrong size anyway. Got to go back to the 516s. goes on forever. Okay, we got that one out. 
Now what's left to hold it? Nothing! Ha! We got it! All right, all right, all right. Now, and now that we're out over the bucket, see, we can just pop this little drain thing, which has to pop via the gray. Remember I showed you those gray rings earlier? I can hear it sucking in at the top. I can squeeze that with a pair of pliers and open it right up. There, now we've got a good air in that. Okay, so that's all empty. And take that out. And maybe we can figure out how to get the fan out. Okay, now we've got the fan out. Now, that has to be supported because it's really heavy. There's a lot of copper there. So here's our nifty little fan. That's pretty cool. And if you look on the back, this will tell us that it is upside down. That it is from Morrill Motors in Fort Wayne, Indiana. It's a four watt output class B motor, uses 0.35 amps at 115 volts and spins at 1500 RPM clockwise. It's a really cool little motor and that thing will probably run forever. So we're gonna save that. I'm just gonna set it aside, but that, that's a neat little motor. I like it. It perfectly fits this, air, this uh, radiator. All right, so now we got to get the back side of the radiator apart. Swap to our other socket again, and another round of taking out screws. Batman, can you come here a moment, sir? Hold that right there. It's not heavy, it's just kind of awkward. Thank you. It's gonna take two of us to support all this to get out. All right, that's that. All right, and that's our entire radiator, but I can't take that off because I'd have to cut the lines and I don't want to cut the lines. But at this point, I think if I grab this and slide it that way, this is sitting on little shock mounts. Mm -hmm. So all we gotta do is just slide it. Here, I'll hold that, you slide it. Needs a little more oomph than I got. We've slide. got, it needs to slide. Oh, we're gonna have to take that thing out too. We're gonna need that with it. That's, uh -huh. that little switch does something important. Uh -huh. That's the thermostat. It needs to slide that way to come off the bottom plate. If, if you get under it and look at it, you'll see what I'm talking about. Oh, okay. You feel them? Yeah, yeah. Maybe these can be popped or something. All right, I'm going to swap out to the... Oh, I need the little one here. You think, yeah, those are... No, I can't really get it to slide very well. All right, hold this in. I'll get this off. And what we'll do is we'll just take the remainder of the unit off as one whole piece. I'll, I'll take off this side. And then uh, I'll take off the bottom piece. There. All right. So, yeah, I just got to do two little bolts down here real quick.
Ah, it's covered in paint. Okay, so that should be that side. You don't need that. All right, so that's all there. Oh, there's important information on the water. And the, hey, look, it tells you about the screen and the O-ring yeah, that we studied yeah. earlier. Yeah. All right. So you just take that bolt off. This thing should lift right off the front. There you go. I don't even think these hold anything anymore. So I should be able. To, if you can hold that for a little bit, I can get these two screws out on the bottom. Is there one on your side? No, it's one on my side. So you just undo that. You should just be able to take it up. Yeah, it we'll right take it off these two and it'll come right out. So I just got to get this out. But this is in a bad anchor. I think it's a bad anchor. I think it's a bad anchor. I, I might be. Yep, I'm spinning the anchor. All right, I'm going to go up. That's what. You don't have to take those off. No, it's just hooks. Oh, it just take sits out. on the hooks. Yeah. Okay. I can't go up because I'm stuck on this. Ideas, Batman? Take the whole plate off. We can't. It's all covered. We'd have to Wait, wire wheel off screws. all the stuff. And... All right, we may have to figure out how to get this off. Because we can come back and get this later, but we got to figure out how to get this off. We could get a angle oh, hey. Mm. You can't push it just to the side. Why? Because the holes are on different sides. We got to take oh. these off. So let me mess with this. Just get comfortable. Sit tight. You'll be all right, Batman. I'm going to lift that up and pop that off like that. Spin that around. Lift it up. Pop it off. That's two of them. Oh, they did this before it was mounted to the wall, you think? Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> all right, let's spin that around. Lift it up. I got it. Okay, that's three. Let's not step on my microphone. Spin that around. Snap it up. Got it. All right, now we can just lift that right out, and set it down here, and there is our prize. The entire phase change cooling system out of a water cooler. <laughs> that would make an interesting one for a computer. Yeah, that could be really cool for a computer. So, all right. So that's, that's the project there, Batman. Mm -hmm. And now the rest is just cleanup work. All right. So I want to thank you guys for watching. I want to thank Batman for helping. And uh, let us know what you thought. Go out there, explore something new. I'm Chris Bowden with The Geek Group. Please remember to rate, comment, and subscribe. You ever notice I always say that and you haven't been able to rate the videos in forever? It's just like like or dislike. That's so great. like, that's a rating. Like the video. Like the video for Tom and his awesome cameraman. So you guys comment what you thought. Have fun. I'm Chris Bowden. As always, we'll see you next time. This video was made possible by a grant from the Future Girl Foundation. This video was made possible by thousands of private donations from members and viewers like you. Please visit thegeekgroup.org for more information on how you can donate and become a part of our dreams of Avalon.